In this offensive episode, Ryan talks about other investors and landlords who are not in touch with reality. They get an idea in their mind as to the value they believe their property is worth, and even though Ryan knows and shows them why they will lose money, several months later, when they lost 4.5k with it empty, Ryan does a deal at nearly 50% below the original price. Why don't people just listen because the market is the market. Nothing but the truth on Tuesdays. Every Tuesday, you'll get nothing but the truth. This offensive and explicit episode covers current issues, trending topics, and more that will punch you in the face with the truth. If you can't handle that, don't listen, because Ryan does not hold back. And if you're up to no good, we're watching. So let me share something with you guys that really does piss me off. Now, I completely understand some of you may agree with this, some of you may not agree with this, okay? Now, my company, and even myself, we approach a lot of landlords, a lot of companies, a lot of a lot of anybody who has property, whether it's one property or a hundred properties, doesn't matter who they are. My company approaches lots of landlords, lots of investors, lots of people, lots of companies who have properties to rent, okay? Now, the reason why we do that is because every £1,000 of rent we pay out, we get to collect around £3,000 in revenue every single month. Fuck. Do you understand why we go shopping as much as possible to rent properties? 1000 in, 3000 out. 1000 in, 3000 out. 1000 in, 3000 out. Are you getting this? Good, good, good. Okay, so we look and shop for a lot of fucking properties. Now, we approach landlords. Let me give an example. Recently, approaching landlords. Actually, no, no. Let me go backwards. Approaching landlords last year, 2019. Properties that are up to rent for around about... Um, about 1600 pounds a month. At the time, they're asking for that figure. It's just too expensive. It's above the market rent. They're holding out for these numbers. And... You know, the deal just doesn't work for us. Yes, we would make around about £3,000. Um, but, you know, we're, we're paying over the odds. three, four £400 over the odds. Okay, just doesn't work at that figure. So it's above the market value. So we make our offers. The landlords say no. We're very, very close to their asking price. But the landlords say no. They're holding out for a higher fucking offer. Then what happens? Coronavirus. Whew. Corona fucking virus. That happens. Now we have landlords that um, it, where well, let's say we're a week into the coronavirus. We go back to the landlords. The properties are, are vacant, as you can imagine. They're holding out for the 16, 1700 pounds a month. You know, it's a two bedroom flat apartment. And now we go back to them and say, we would pay you. Or do you want to relook at our figure? And we'll pay you this amount. You know, it's around about 1500 something like that. This is week one into the coronavirus. They're like, no, no. Market hasn't changed. This is the value. This is what we want. This is what we need. By now, they fucking lost one month. Fucking two months. Fucking three months of rent. Fucking idiots. They've lost three months of rent already. Just think about it. Around £1,500 a month that we would have paid. Three months have gone by. That's around four and a half fucking thousand pounds that they've lost. These fucking clever, smart landlords holding out for an extra hundred, two hundred quid a month. They've now fucking lost four and a half fucking grand. Now, you can never get that back. You will know as a landlord, you can never get that back because time passes. And if you're not collecting money every single day in rent for that property, it's costing money. It's losing money. It's lost you money. You're a fucking idiot. Put the L on your forehead, the fucking loss, because you've made a mistake. Holding out for the 1700, you've now lost four and a half fucking grand. How can that, who put that fucking landlord in charge? Who put that fucking landlord in charge of making decisions on money? That motherfucker couldn't even fucking count and add up on an abacus. How the hell can they be in charge of a fucking asset where they're, the decisions they're making is losing their money every single fucking day. Now they've lost four and a half grand. Okay. A few weeks into the coronavirus, we go back to the landlord. Hello, Mr. Landlord. We noticed your property is still vacant, etc., etc. 
they may have tweaked the price a little bit. They may have tweaked the price a little bit. They're holding out for around about 1550 you know, around 1550 And we're like, Mr. Landlord, we spoke to you back in November or December 2019 and made this offer at around about 1500 We spoke to you in fucking March, you know, the end of March, corona fucking virus, everything empty, nobody going to fucking work, and we offered you around about 1500 now we're mid deep into the fucking pandemic. Shit is real. People are losing their jobs. People can't go to work. People can't leave their fucking houses. People can't pay their fucking bills. We go back to Mr. Landlord and we say to Mr. Landlord, hello, Mr. Landlord. We understand your property is still empty. We spoke to you from back in November, December, February, March, end of March. Now we're deep in the heart of the coronavirus. We can't pay you what we offered back then, Mr. Landlord. Now we could, all we could pay is around about £1,100. Do you want to go ahead with that? What do you think Mr. Landlord says? Fuck yes, because it's empty. There's no prospects. Nobody's renting. Nobody's moving. Nobody can leave their fucking house. Nobody can leave their fucking sofa. Everyone's on their sofa watching fucking Netflix eating fucking chocolate and having lots and lots and lots of fucking lions. There's no fucker in the market to rent the place. And we come along. So it's gone from around 1700 a month. We're now paying around about 1100 Give or take a few pounds. It's about 1100 something like that. And guess what? The sweetener. We managed to get the fucking bills included. So we're not even paying 1100 we're paying around about fucking 900 because the average bills on an apartment right now with more than one bedroom is about 250 270 a month. Council tax, TV license, internet, obviously broadband, fibre, um, what else is there? Electricity, gas, water and all that other crap. It's about £275 a month. So now we've got this fucking property, which is great for us, but we've got it at around, what's that? Say 900, he wanted 1700, it's around about, it's nearly half the fucking price, because of what? Yes, it's an amazing deal for us, but we had a fucking pig-headed, stubborn landlord. A landlord who doesn't fucking know what the market's doing, has no idea where the market is going, should not be in charge of making the decisions, should not be in charge of making the decisions on their particular property, on their asset, on their assets, on their building, on their fucking portfolio, on their fucking hedge fund, because they're in the wrong fucking business. If they can't look at the market and see what's happening and adjust the rents based on that, they're, they're, they're a dinosaur. And they're just gonna keep losing and losing, and losing, and fucking losing money every single month. Because demand, supply, demand, supply, demand, supply, fucking coronavirus. You know the game. This really pisses me off when this happens, okay? I understand we're getting, you're probably thinking, hold on a minute, you got it half price. But we would have happily paid a higher amount to get it back then, to get it locked in for longer, to have the season, you know, to have the peak and etc, etc. Maybe we may have lost out short term if we would have done that. But obviously we know we would have won long term. So where we are right now, we're calling landlords, we're calling investors, we're calling guest house owners, we're calling hoteliers. And we're having the exact same conversations with them. We're looking at them right now. We're looking at their business right now. We're saying, hello, Mr. Hotel owner, Mr. Hotelier. You've got this building, it's got 20 rooms, 20 fucking rooms, whatever. Now, what was your revenue over the last three years? What was your occupancy over the last three years? Let's have a look back at that, okay? So now we're looking at these numbers. Now we say to them, what is your room rate for each room on average over that period? Now, scrap all the cost, take all booking.com fees away, take the running cost, take the operational costs away, Take, strip everything back so you've just got the net profit. Show me the net profit. 
If you're already shortletting on Booking.com or Airbnb and you're not generating 8,200 for your three beds, 6,200 for your two beds, or even 4,100 for your one beds each month, then oh my goodness, you're losing money every single month. Now, I created an ebook to show you exactly how we hit those numbers consistently in my business. And I want to give you a free copy so I can show you exactly how you can do the same. Just go to www.theyrentanyhome.com forward slash free book and tell me where to send your copy. Does that make sense? They're looking at the numbers. I have an idea, give or take a few percent of where their net profit is on every single room in their hotel. So what do we do? We work backwards. We reverse engineer our offer. I say, here's your building. It has 20 rooms. This is what I believe your net profit would have been. I can go on company's house. I can have a look. I can talk to some staff. I can talk to some employees. I can log into my um, online account on the particular platform I use. And I can look at most of your stats. I can see how you perform, how you perform, occupancy levels, and all of those different things by looking at some other stats that I have access to. This is what you have as a revenue manager. When you manage revenue on dozens and dozens and dozens of properties, buildings, guest houses, hotels, etc. in, where are we now? Six different cities and two countries. When you know this information, have access to information, I can, I can more or less predict what they had over the last three years, what it costs for a room, their running costs, what it costs for everything else in their business to work out how much they actually earn net profit from each room. Now multiply that by 20, how many rooms they got. Multiply that by 19, 14, 11, 7, however many rooms they've got. And then what are we doing? I'm making them an offer based on them doing nothing at all and renting their building to me, leasing their building to me, so I still give them what they already had, the average, what you already had, the net profit over the last three years. I'm going to give you that. That's what I'm going to pay for the building, and then my company runs it. How would anyone not agree to that? When you think about it, let me just remind you of what I just said. I'm looking at their numbers. I'm working out their profit. I'm working out their loss. I'm working out their running costs, their operational costs. I'm working out their expenses to give me their net profit per room multiplying it by how many rooms they have in their hotel, saying to them, I'll pay you that to take your whole building or the entire floor or multiple rooms, etc., on those rooms for exactly what you got after doing all of the work on average over the last three years. I'm going to pay you that for me to then, or my company to then run that building or that floor as a hotel. What do you think they're saying? And we're in the fucking pandemic of the coronavirus where the hospitality sector has fucking tanked. So whatever they had before, they're not going to get for the foreseeable future. However high their occupancy have been, they're not going to get that for the foreseeable future. The hospitality industry is fucked. It's on its knees. In China right now, that lockdown before us and open before us is, you know, is completely trading, fully trading right now. Okay. Now, they're not even at 40% levels of activity of business in the hospitality sector compared to this time last year. And they locked down before us, way before us, and open before us, way before us. So if we're following that playing catch up, and they're not even at 40%, where are we going to be? And we're only starting in fucking July. So our season is finished. This season, 2020 season, is finished. Make sure you've subscribed because tomorrow you'll get show me the money on Wednesday. If you have a deal right now and you don't know the best way to structure it, if you post a deal in the community group on Facebook called Property Crash Course, Ryan will help you unlock hidden profits and save you from locking yourself into a loss on those bad deals that every property sourcer wants you to buy. But I'm getting a lot of pushback from these owners of these hotels. Lots of them are still not seeing the opportunity where I'm offering them exactly what they got over the last three years for their building by giving it to me and doing nothing. Don't do anything at all. I will take over the whole thing and pay you that. I will manage to guess. I will 
um, deal with the, the admin for the guests. We will send our cleaning team in. We will prepare the room. We will sell the room. We'll process the payments. We'll collect the money. We'll run it as a hotel. We'll do this. We'll do that. We'll do that. And everything in between. And I'm still getting the same pushback from these owners. The same as what I just explained to you at the start to do with renting properties from landlords. It starts off here. They're not recognizing where we are, which is down here in the pandemic. My offer right now is an amazing offer. But what will happen is as we get to the opening, when we get to the 4th of July, and then as we start to get to the end of July, and as we get into August, where the season is finished, my offer will go down. I will offer less money. Then we'll be in the low season. Then they'll probably struggle to stay open. Many hotels will close. Many will just fucking disappear. Many will disappear. And what do you think is going to happen in one month, two months, three months from now? Those hoteliers, those hotel owners will be having the conversation again around September, October, November, December, January, where they've been bleeding cash. They've run out of money. There wasn't this staycation hype, which they're imagining and their rooms can go from 70 pounds a night to 700 because of nobody can fly in the staycation hope. They're fucking deluded. I'm just trying to help them to make money right now. I'm trying to help them in their business to see what's really happening. Now, because they only have one building and we have dozens of buildings, dozens of apartments, dozens of houses, properties in six cities and two countries, we have the stats. We have the revenue management. We have the occupancy levels in different cities. We are, we are, we've got lots of tentacles, you could say, like an octopus in the hospitality sector in multiple different cities. So we understand what's happening, we understand what's happened, and we can understand what's happening. But for some reason, some of these guys, they just can't see where the opportunities are. Nothing against them. Some of these guys will just have to learn the hard way. Come back to us, companies like mine, in one month, two months, three months, September, October, November, December, January, when the hospitality sector will be dead. Yes, we'll be there. Yes, we'll still be interested in acquiring their building or floors or rooms on their premises to run as a hotel, but our offers clearly will be lower because we know we will lose money all the way through January, well, November, December, January, February, March. And then when we get to about April, then it will make money. We'll lose money all the way through the season up until then. This is something that really does piss me off. These guys can see the market. They know their data. They know what they earn. They know what they didn't earn. They know how much it costs to run the property. We're just asking them to strip all of those costs away. We'll give you that figure. So you don't do anything. We'll give you that figure. Let's work the numbers out together. Let's take all your expenses, operational costs away. We'll give you that figure on two rooms, four rooms, eight rooms, 12 rooms, or even all 20 rooms, whatever you want to do. So if you're in a hotel business or you know somebody who else is and they're looking for a guaranteed return of fixed rent on their rooms, whether they're filled, whether we fill them or not, you guys know where to find me. Just hit me up at ryan-otto.com and let's, let's, let's discuss this together. This is just something that really pisses me off. I'm showing them. I'm leading the horse to the water, showing them the fucking water, showing them the money, showing them the pot of gold, and they still can't see the opportunity. I hope you got some value from this episode. I would love to hear your thoughts on my rant. He's a number one Amazon bestseller. He's an NLP manipulator. He's a property core seller. He's a Lamborghini driving multi-millionaire property guru. Forget that same old boring I am me, me, me narcissistic podcast format because nobody gives a fuck. This podcast is all about you. So I'm taking these few seconds to thank you for subscribing, to thank you for leaving your five star reviews. And thank you for sharing this show with all of your friends. My team and I will keep bringing you these episodes and answering all of your burning questions in my Facebook community group called 
property crash course if you can just keep telling all of your friends about this show.